God bless you all. Once again, the Holy Spirit is moving. I had no intention of making this video, but I felt the Lord told me that I need to address this because when I made the video talking about the armor of God, I accidentally left out the shield of faith. In your Christian walk, the Lord will test you on the shield of faith. Let me tell you guys what happened to me. I'm going to tell you my testimony. You know, uh, this is going back <laughs> some eight, nine years ago, and I never really shared it in its entirety, but I'm going to share a lot more than I've ever shared before. So I have discussed with you all in the past how I was blacklisted from my job. That is true. I was a chemical engineer. I had an award winning chemical engineering career where I was given awards that no one in the whole company even achieved the great awards that I was given. I was very celebrated on my job, on different jobs that I had in the past, and I had a great career. I did that for over 10 years. However, during the whole time, the Lord was calling me to the ministry. He had called me to the ministry when I was 17. I believe I was 17 when he first called me to the ministry. Jesus literally came to me multiple times to my face, not even a dream or a vision. I would be sitting in church and he would just appear right in front of me and say, feed my sheep. Multiple times that has happened to me. I don't care if nobody believe me or not. I'm telling you guys the truth. And I had prophetic dreams and he would say, feed my sheep. It was always, it was just like Peter. Like, why does he keep saying this over and over? He just kept saying, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And it wasn't one time he would come to me and say, do you love me? And I would say, yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. You know, it was just like what Peter went through. And I ignored it for a long time. Actually, there were times in my life where I would join the church. Honestly, I tried to, for the most part, always stay connected to the church, in the prayer ministry, leading people to Christ. I did all of that. Praying over them, leading them to Christ, all of that. I even got in trouble at the church before because I was leading people to Christ. And the pastor was upset about that because he said that we're not supposed to lead nobody to Christ, that they need to come and talk to him, some foolishness like that. Because these churches out here, a lot of them, they only concerned about money. They want to make sure they're getting your tithes. They don't care about your soul. And I led people to Christ anyway. I remember saying to myself, they can fire me or, you know, whatever. I mean, it wasn't that they was paying me anyway, because they wasn't. And I just kept doing it anyway. And I remember this lady looking at me because we had just came out of a meeting. And they told me not to do it. And I turned around and did it anyway. And she looked at me like, <laughs> but she didn't report me, praise God. I was like, I'm not going to let these people come up here for salvation. And I'm just going to look at them sideways and send them back. What foolishness is that? So anyway, I would always do that, you know, because I would interpret it as, you know, maybe that's what God wants me to do. And I wouldn't do full time ministry. I was always working or in school and I just was not giving God 24 seven. And that's what he wanted for a long time. I really didn't understand that, but I just knew he wasn't pleased because he kept coming to me during that whole time saying, feed my sheep. And I was like, I'm doing that. You know, like I wasn't understanding him. And fast forward, you guys, I'm skipping a lot of my testimony, but fast forward. There was a time when I went through pure hell in my life. I cannot talk about a lot of it. And the reason I say I can't talk about a lot of stuff is because of a judge order. So that's why I can't go into it too much. But I was going through pure hell. I was totally being harassed on my job where my own boss used to come and tell me that I should kill myself. He would even put his nose right up to my nose, right out of eye and tell me I should just kill myself. And other things that went along with that, which I'm trying to make this as short as possible. So I'm not going to go into that too much. And I was going through pure hell, very much depressed, crying a lot, struggling to get out the bed. But I had to keep going to work and doing my job because I had children and I had to take care of my children. And so I'm going through all this stuff with the courts and going through all this stuff on my job, going through all this stuff in my personal life as well with friends and things like that. And Eventually, I left that job and I went to another job and they fired me because they heard about the other job 
that I was at and they didn't want me working anywhere else because they was in the process of blacklisting me. And I know this for a fact because I was sitting in my office and I heard them talking about me. And I even confronted them after I heard them talking about me like, you know, because I was so devastated. I was like, I'm a single mom. How could you do this to me? I worked hard to get my chemical engineering degree. And they, it was disgusting about blacklisting me. And they literally said, we can't do it now. We have to do it. In, and now I'm forgetting if it was six, was it six months or two months? Now I'm forgetting. I can't remember now, but I think they said six months. or They might have said two months. I'm not sure. But anyway, they said they had to wait because they had just hired me. And they said for legal reasons, they had to wait. I heard them say that. And they said, no, we wasn't talking about you when I confronted them. They denied it. And I said, you got to be talking about me because you were talking about a female that you just hired doing my job. I'm the only one. And they was like, no, we was talking about somebody else. And they were so embarrassed that I heard them. And their door was closed and my door was closed, but I heard them clear as day. I don't know if God gave me supernatural hearing or what that day, but I heard them clear as day talking about me. And so anyway, fast forward to that time that they said either it was six months or two months, something like that. They fired me. They called me in the office and I knew it was coming because Jesus came to me. Let me say this too. I was in the bed. Praise God. Uh, Jesus woke me up, came to me right in my face. Praise God. I, yes, he did. I saw him clear as day, came right in my face and he was flying over me, like hovering like over me as I was laying in the bed. But he had woke me up and he said to me, it's real. It's, it's true. It's really happening. He said something like that. Now I'm forgetting his exact words, but I remember that part about him saying it's really happening. And he was like, yeah, it's true. It's real. It's really happening. Something like that. And he was, that's all he said, but he telepathically let me know in that moment. Yes, they are going to fire you. No, I'm sorry. That wasn't all he said. He also said that he was going to take care of me. He was like, it's true. It's real. It's really going to happen, but I will take care of you. And he telepathically let me know that that meant that they were going to fire me. And I saw that. I saw myself being fired in that moment. And I was like devastated. I mean, I cried and cried. I couldn't believe it because I have been on my own since I was 12. You guys, it's a lot of my testimony I'm skipping. Trust me, I had my own business at 15. Seriously, of doing yards. I had other kids in the area working for me doing yards and they would give me a cut because I was providing the equipment. Yeah, I mean, I was just always a worker. So to not be able to go to work was so devastating to me. And I, I just could not believe this was happening, especially I was a single mom because I knew that they were blacklisting me and they did blacklist me. They fired me. They called me in the office. They fired me, laid me off rather. And they said, oh, it's nothing to do with your performance. Your performance is good, but we just have to do some layoffs. But I knew they was lying. And I kept trying to get a job everywhere I went. And they kept telling me that actually a lot of them didn't say anything back to me. But the ones that did say anything back to me, which was very rare, I would say in all the jobs that I applied for, maybe two people said something back to me. And it was just like, you know, give me some vague thing that, you know, they can't they can't move forward with me or something like that. But most of the time they wouldn't say anything back to me. And the Lord was giving me prophetic dreams, plural, where he was showing me the way that they blacklisted me is when people would call for a reference. They would give them a bad reference about me. That's what he showed me. So anyway, the Lord also gave me prophetic dreams telling me not to go back to work. I couldn't believe it. I was like, God, I'm a single mom. What am I supposed to do? And he was like, he was showing me, do not go back to work. And I'm not saying this is for everybody. So don't jump up and say, ooh, we, that's me. <laughs> but I mean, God had to give me a lot of confirmations because I was always self uh, independent, you know, always independent. And he told me, he said, do not go back to work. I want you to do the ministry. I'm your boss. You work for me. I cannot tell you guys. I've I probably had at least over 10 dreams of this, of the Lord telling me this. Some of these dreams I did actually post and some of them I did not. And if I can find some of them, I guess I'll put them in the description box. And I did not want to obey that at first. And but it was nothing I can do. And then the Lord was showing me that they 
were going to allow me to go back to work in some menial job. Like for instance, as a chemical engineer with my bonus, I made over six figure salary. But God was showing me that they were going to try to get me to go back to work making, you know, almost pennies, making nothing. And he showed me that and he told me, don't take it. He was giving me prophetic dreams, telling me, do not go back to work. You work for me. I want you to do the ministry full time, 24 seven. And it took a lot, you guys. I cannot even tell you guys. I did not know how the Lord was going to take care of me because he would never tell me. He just kept telling me, and it's so many dreams I'm skipping, you guys, so many stuff I'm skipping because I'm trying to make this as short as possible. But he just kept telling me that he was going to take care of me and I didn't know how. So I started thinking, well, maybe that means that I'm going to be homeless. And when I say he was telling me he's going to take care of me, Jesus himself was literally coming to me in dreams, talking to me to my face. He put his hand on my hand in one dream and he looked me right in the eye, clear as day. I saw him clear as day and he said, I am the God of the universe. So he was like, trust me. And so I thought, well, maybe he want me to be homeless. So I started doing all this research into how to be homeless. I was looking in the shelters and things like that. And I found out all the shelters and any type of support was completely filled up. I live in a tiny town and they had nothing. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? And they was like, you're going to have to be on the streets. And I was like, oh, no. And uh, so I started thinking, well, this is what God wants for me. He wants me to be homeless. So I started researching how to survive in the cold outside. And, you know, I was looking to be homeless. That's what I was thinking. And then these angels came to me in a dream and they told me that I'm not going to be homeless. They was like, now I'm forgetting the dream. But I know they was telling me I'm not going to be homeless. And they said, I need to trust him. But also, let me say this. God was also telling me, don't ask for money. So I was like. Because I was thinking, okay, God, you're telling me you're my boss. I can't ask for money. I can't <laughs> I can't get a job. Uh, wh- what am I supposed to do? I'm so lost right now. And I was really struggling and I was really upset with the whole situation. And I told God that I didn't believe in him. I just had like a mental breakdown. Like I was like, I don't trust you. I don't believe in you. This was many years ago, you guys. This is like eight, nine years ago, nothing recent. And I was like, I don't trust you. I don't believe in what you're doing. I can't take this this no more. I don't trust what you're saying. And mind you, other people was also having prophetic dreams about me and were coming to me. Another lady, I remember her right now. And she, and Jesus came to her. She was in the kitchen and Jesus came to her the same way he did me. He just materialized right in front of her face. And he told her how God wants to break this lack off my life, but I got to trust him. And she was saying there's other saints like me as well, that we got to trust him. I knew that was God, but I just, I couldn't, because I have an analytical mind, you guys. Okay, it's true. I have a very analytical mind and I always try to figure things out. So if I couldn't figure it out, you know, we had a problem. And I remember arguing with my teachers when I was in school because they would tell me things. But if they couldn't explain it to me, I couldn't get past it. I wasn't one of those people that, you know, you just tell me something and I just run with it. I was always very analytical. Why? You know, OK, if this is the theory. Why is it the theory? Explain it to me. Don't just tell me this is the answer. Where is it coming from? That's just how I've always been. Well, before. So anyway, fast forward, I'm telling God I can't trust him and all of that. And all of a sudden, I felt the Holy Spirit leave me. I was in shock, you guys. I felt the Holy Spirit leave me. And I was in full panic mode. I feel sorry for people that don't have the Holy Spirit. I have experienced what it's like to be without it at least three times in my life. This is one. Another time was when I was in hell. And another time is when I saw the three days of darkness. But yeah, I have felt the panic set in when the Holy Spirit is gone. Wow. I felt that. And I started crying because I had also wrote a letter to the Lord telling him how I didn't trust him and didn't believe in him. What is he doing in my life? I was so upset. And I wrote this nasty letter and I ripped that thing up so fast. And I was like, God, please, please give me back the Holy Spirit. Please, God, don't take your spirit from me. And I started panicking and, and begging him, please, God, I'll trust you, whatever you want, whatever you want. And I said, God, okay, please. And then I wrote a new letter 
and I wrote, I trust you. I believe in you. I, I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but I believe in you. You are my God. Hallelujah. And I just really, really trusted him. Praise God. And then he gave me back the Holy Spirit. Woo. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I mean, man, I feel sorry for anybody in hell without the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's full panic mode. They're not just tortured, but they feel all the panic that goes with it. They're not calm in hell. Uh uh. So anyway, I told God I trusted him. I didn't know how he was going to do what he was going to do. He told me, don't ask for money. And as God in heaven, hear me. During this time in my life, I was about to be four months behind on my mortgage. Let me say that too. These are things I've never shared in its entirety. And I was about a week outside of four months. They had already given me letters telling me that they about to take me to court and they coming for my house. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And this whole time also I was having to eat, you know, with the homeless and God bless the homeless. I got to do a lot of ministering that way, though, and I give God the glory for that. And I was having to go to food pantries and stuff like that. Praise God. I never did food stamps because the Lord led me away from that. It seriously led me away. Like, don't go with the government at all. So I didn't. But I would go to places where the homeless would go because they don't have an address and they couldn't do food stamps either. But there's places that give out free food to the homeless. So I would go and eat with them because, <laughs> you know, and I would take my kids. It was really degrading. It was really degrading. And I'm not saying that to be pompous. And if somebody comment that, I'm going to delete it. Okay. But I'm saying that so you all can understand that I came from a background of making nice money to being in that situation. So for me, it was a huge upheaval to what I was used to. So anyway, I told God that I trusted him. I believed in him. That's the shield of faith, you guys. That's what I'm trying to get to. And as God in heaven hear me, there was a lady who had asked me for my PayPal information, like, I don't know, maybe months before, and never gave me a dime. I was like, why did she even ask me, you know? And I didn't even really think about it. I just totally forgot about it. And all of a sudden, within, I would say, as soon as I trusted God and believed in him, probably within less than an hour, maybe even 10 minutes, this woman sent me the money that I needed to pay my mortgage. And within, I would say, two months, I was all caught up. And I could not believe it. I could not believe it. I'm trying not to cry right now. <laughs> Thank you, God. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. That's a shield of faith, you guys. And God began to supernaturally take care of me over and over. And there were other times throughout these years that I would get behind on the mortgage again. You know, I'll be like two months behind or something like, you know, how am I going to make ends meet and stuff like that. That did happen to me a couple of times. And the Lord would tell me to trust him. I would have additional prophetic dreams because I would be about to be in that point again where I would start worrying. And the Lord would come to me in a dream and he would tell me, trust me. And then sometimes I wouldn't even get into the point where I'm worrying yet, but he would show me the future. Like I had a dream and I did post this dream. And in the dream, I was in the floor on the kitchen crying about my financial situation. And I was wondering, how am I going to do this? How am I going to, you know, make it? And in the dream, the Lord was telling me to trust him and don't worry. And I posted that dream. If I can find it, I'll put it in the description box. But I doubt I can find it, honestly, because I can't I can't even think of what I titled that. But anyway, that actually came true. And I didn't even realize it till I was in the kitchen on the floor crying and bawling my eyes out. The Lord brought that dream back to my remembrance. And he showed me, I know the future. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Trust me. And so that's what I did. I got up off the floor and I put my trust in God and I didn't worry. And throughout the years that I've been on this ministry, I do not ask for money on my ministry. Praise God. And. Let me say this too. When that lady helped me out, I was not even putting my pay information on my channel at all. That's why she had to ask me. I didn't put it there at all. It wasn't on my channel for years. When I first got this ministry, I didn't put that stuff on my channel 
for over, I would say, five or six years. Seriously. It's only recent years that I have put that on my channel. Maybe the last two years. And the only reason I put it on there is because God actually came to me and he told me. He, his words was, I'm trying to send people to bless you, but you don't have your pay information on there. And they're turning away and giving the money to someone else. That is what he told me. So he told me to put the information on there. So that's all I did. I obeyed him. And I give God the glory. I mean, this is eight, nine years ago. I live off my faith. That is the shield of faith. That is the shield of faith. Okay. And sometimes God will even come to me and ask me, like, what do you want? And I'll be like, God, well, I'm trying to visit my daughter. She's about to give birth. You know, my daughter needs a bed or whatever it is. I'm just using that as examples. Those are recent things that the Lord provided for. He'll do me like that, you know, and I give him the glory for that. But that's the shield of faith. And this is a very, 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 very end time important video, you guys, because a lot of people do not have the shield of faith. They can't trust the Lord for a loaf of bread. OK, that's what they take in the mark of the beast. They don't trust the Lord to keep them because things are not going to work out the way that they wanted them to. All this time they relied on their money. Some people are very well off, you know, very well off. Very used to buying everything and doing everything their way. I used to be like that, you guys. Let me just tell you how I used to roll. Seriously. I used to go to restaurants and I would order like 10 entrees between me and my daughter. I'm not even joking. Like 10 entrees, filling up the table. We would get the biggest table we could. Or the 10 entrees. Because we we would do that on purpose. Because we couldn't make up our mind. So we just ordered a whole bunch of food. And then we would eat whatever we wanted to eat. Not even getting full at all. Not even getting full, and then we would leave it all there. We wouldn't even take no leftovers. God in heaven, hear me. I'm not joking. I've done that so many times in my life. I was used to buying the things that I wanted. I was used to relying on my job, relying on my money. Praise God. The Lord put me in a situation where I had to learn to rely on him. And I've been doing that for years. I live off my faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith and that is how I live and I have had crazy people attack me in the past you shouldn't take money from the ministry you shouldn't take money from there no, 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 no. first of all that's a biblical lie because even in the times of the Levite priest the tithes went to the Levite priest okay but since the order of Melchizedek which Jesus Christ is under now you can have priests in any trap I'm in the tribe of Judah the Lord has told me that to my face he came to me in my room and told me I was in a, a tribe of Judah praise God but now under his order Melchizedek predates the Israelites please uh, listen to me when I'm trying to explain to you all that's why he said he's under the order of Melchizedek Jesus Christ was also in the tribe of Judah so and the Bible says that he is a high priest according to the Levite the Levite priesthood Jesus could not be a high priest because he would have to have been a Levite. That's why he was a high priest under the order of Melchizedek, which predates the Levites. It predates the Israelites in general. We're talking about during the time of Abraham, in the time of Abraham's grandfather. And I want to say more about that, but I'm actually holding back on purpose because I'm just trying to stick to the point. But we're talking about during the time of Shem, you guys. This is what I'm trying to get to. The Lord is under that order that predates the Israelites. The Lord showed me, I was shocked by this, that I have high priest status. I did that video without even understanding what he was showing me. I'll put that video in the description box. He literally showed me I have high priest status. I was in shock. And I was ashamed to actually come out and say that because... You know, the the devil has sent a lot of Jezebels on my channel. Anytime I say anything good about myself, anything uh, like this, what I'm giving right now, my testimony, these Jezebels have risen up and attacked me. And I feel sorry for them because God has let me know of his judgment that's going to come down on them because they're not just attacking me. They have done things to mess up my ministry as well. And so they've done things to mess up the saints with God. So it's really bad. I really, really do feel sorry for them. 
But guys, I'm telling you guys the truth. This is what God showed me. I have high priest status. Didn't even understand that. I'm, I'm not even joking. I was really shocked. I don't even think I mentioned it when I talked about it in the video because I didn't know it. I had to continue to research that outfit because I saw myself in this outfit in heaven in this really powerful vision. And it was a high priest outfit. And I was like, what? I had on a hat and everything. I was holding a sensor. I didn't even know what a sensor was. I had to study and learn what is this thing I was holding. I found that it's called a sensor. And I was like, what? I had the 12 stones on my chest, all of that. So we are commanded to pay tax, you guys. I'm going to tell y'all the whole truth, okay? These are things that I did not want to say. And it was part of my shame of the gospel because I knew that I would get attacked if I said these things. That's why I didn't say them. I didn't want to share my testimony. I didn't want to share how God has taken care of me through sending people to bless me because I knew people would attack me, okay? I didn't want to talk about high priest status because I knew people would attack me, okay? I knew these things. But I'm at the point right now where I'm like a lot of other people. I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel, praise God. So I'm just going to tell you guys the whole truth. We supposed to pay our tithes to the church, to people with high priest status. That is biblical. And also just explaining tithes. Tithes goes to the church. Offerings go to helping the homeless. And I do all of that too, praise God. Helping the homeless, helping people in need, that is called offerings. But you don't give your tithes like that. You give your offerings that way. But tithes are supposed to go to God's church. And that is a church that, for the most part, in my opinion, is not in a building. It's a church like the church that I have. It's a church like the church that other ministries have. But tithes should go to the person that is feeding you, helping you to grow in Christ, helping you to get to new levels in Christ. That's who you should be giving your tithes to. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot of people on my channel that have never supported my ministry at all, ever. You know, and that's between them and God. And I do have a few people on my channel that do support my ministry. And I give God the glory for them. And that is how the Lord has taken care of me all these years. And I want to say thank you. to the, From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And you guys came together. I told you all about my daughter needing a bed. We have the money to get her to bed. I give God the glory for that. You know, special shout outs to everyone who contributed to her baby registry as well. She was able to get a lot of things because <laughs> me and my daughter, honestly, especially my daughter is very, very poor. Okay. She didn't even have the money to get any type of supplies for the end days or anything. And I give God the glory for that, that we have the money now to get the bed. You know, I live by my faith, you guys. That is a shield of faith. And God will most likely call a lot of people into those situations as they're losing their job. Listen to this video, what I'm saying, you guys. Please listen to what I'm saying. Don't lose track on any, anything else I said. Please listen to the gist of what I'm saying. God will most likely call many of us to have to be fired from jobs because we won't take the V. Many of us to lose family members, many of us that are in fear that we may be kicked out of our homes, our spouse might leave us. And I say are because I'm talking about the church in general, because we are one body, one fold, one people. We are one church. But all of these things are happening as the kingdom of darkness retaliates against us for not taking the mark of the beast. But you are going to have to trust the Lord. That is the shield of faith. And many people are going to have to take out that shield right now in these end days. And I'm telling you as a person that God has supernaturally taken care of for over eight years. Hallelujah. Or about eight years. You can trust in the Lord. He will not fail you. And when you get to heaven and he checks your garments, you want him to see that shield. You want him to see the shield of faith on you. I love you all. Bye.